Hey y'all, welcome back to Schema with Schwartz. Today we're gonna finish drawing up inside zone against a 4-3 on the backside. The backside blocks are so vital because the running back will often wind this run back to hit in the backside A gap. So the block by the center of the guard, and especially whoever has to block this backside end, is supremely important. I'm gonna cover that today. We're gonna start here with the center and the left guard's block on this uh, D tackle right here. So their assignment will be to block the point linebacker, the mic, and the D-tackle right here. Their technique will depend on where this D-tackle is aligned. If he's aligned on the center, the center can get a good piece of him, obviously. He'll step with his right foot first and then his left foot to get a piece of that D-tackle. And the guard will come in here to finish up their double team. And they'll move the guy off the ball vertically. You want to take the defensive lineman and move him to the, to the linebacker. We'll erase this box real quick to make it easier. And the reason why you want to try to move him this way, obviously you create movement for the running back to get behind here eventually, but also it allows you to have patience on this Mike linebacker. You want to have patience on the double team because the Mike can pop over here real quick like this and force the center to come off and then come backside like this when the back eventually winds back and no one will block him. So you really want to take your time on this double team and make sure that you do a good job of moving the D-tackle to the mic. You have time to wait for the mic to declare himself, because he might move this way and then come back this way, and then the guard will come off, this guard will come off here and block him, and the center will stay on the D-tackle. Where things get a little interesting for the center is when he's not touched by, by the tackle. If the tackle lines up right here on the guard, you never want to step back on double teams. So the center's not going to step back and help that guard. He's going to step to his gap and ensure that his gap is taken care of, but also keep his body presence kind of in the middle right here. He's not going to disappear and leave this huge hole right here for the D-tackle to run into right here. He's going to hang out for just a second right here to help his guard, and the guard will then drive block that two technique right there, the two eye. And the guard will just slowly work his way up to the mic. Remember, you have time on this play, and you have to remember the play will probably wind back here, so you want to stay head up. Uh, on this Mike linebacker, don't let him kind of rock this way and come back. So remember, if the center is covered, it's a hard double team. If the center is uncovered, if, you, if the D-tackle is right here, the left guard will drive this guy, the center will step, keep good body presence, and come up here like this, not worrying about the D-tackle spiking, because remember, the right guard has to block that spike unless there's a change, and we'll get into that in the next video. The backside is real simple. The backside tackle always has this linebacker right here, whether there's a guy in his way or not, this is his guy. So in this case right here, he will step two, should secure his gap, come up and block the will on the play side number, and the backside tight end has this block right here. As I stated, the backside is so important because the back will end up coming back behind this double team right here, so the backside end always has to be accounted for. You can account for him in this balanced formation like you do right here. You can actually have him as a fullback right here and having a two-back run, a 21 personnel run, and split-back flow right here. He will block that guy right here. This guy can stay front side like this. Or you can have a wing tight end over here who slides across the line of scrimmage. You can have a, a wide receiver come right here and block that D end. You can even have a wide out come from over here, this way, all the way across and block that D end. But this is the guy you have to account for because as the play winds back right here, if he's unblocked because of the tight course of the back, this guy will make the play every time for a tackle for loss. So there's a lot of stuff going on right here, but hopefully this was easy enough for you guys to understand. So that's the back side of inside zone against a 4-3. Hope you enjoyed this presentation. Next one, I'm going to have adjustments made to pressure on this look right here. And then we'll get into the true easiest way to run inside zone, which is run at weeks. So you have two double teams at the point of attack. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Stay tuned for more. Thank you.